Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the gamma and beta distributions. We'll provide some overview and a couple examples with each distribution. My name is Fred Raspoli, and we're coming to you from Stony Brook University. All right, just a brief overview of the video. Uh, the first half will consist of the gamma distribution, a couple of slides with properties, an example, and an example two. It's what I call stop the video, and a great idea for the uh, listener to just stop and practice on a problem. That's somewhat similar to example one. Second half of the video, same thing, but just with the beta distribution. All right, the gamma distribution we could think of as a family of skewed distributions based on two parameters, alpha and beta. So you could see the different shape here of the gamma distribution. That's why we call this a family of distributions. Um, there is a PDF for this, and you could see that the, the PDF involves the gamma function. Over here I have gamma of alpha. This is beta to the power alpha. And you can see here's our x. So right, this is a function of x to the alpha minus one times e to the minus x over beta. And as with some of the other distributions, we get some nice easy formulas for the mean or, or e of x. Here e of x is this product alpha times beta, and the variance of x is alpha times beta squared. So the gamma distribution could be very useful if you're trying to fit a function to data because it's flexible in the sense with alpha and beta varying, you get these different shapes, so that makes it really good when you're trying to do this sort of thing. From a practical point of view, we could think of the distribution um, and the way it's used to predict waiting times for future events. So for example, if arrivals of events follows a Poisson process with rate lambda, then the wait time until you get k arrivals follows this gamma distribution gamma of k lambda. So in other words, here we mean alpha is equal to k. k is the number of rivals you're waiting for. And lambda is our average rate from the Poisson. And so beta is equal to lambda. Okay, so we think of this probabilities for a certain number of arrivals. It's also very important because the, the gamma distribution, in a sense, generalizes two very important distributions. You could see under certain cases, for example, when alpha is equal to one, the gamma distribution just reduces to the exponential distribution, okay? And then in other situations, the gamma distribution um, reduces to, <coughs> excuse me, reduces to the chi-squared distribution. Okay, this is a distribution that's used when we start doing hypothesis testing. So, so a very important distribution with, with a lot of interesting properties and different from some of the other distributions that we've looked at. For example, just a, a normal distribution uh, or a continuous uniform. This one has a lot of real important properties. All right, for our first example, let's let x be a random variable representing the load of a web server. Suppose that x is distributed as a gamma random variable, and we determine that alpha is equal to one and beta is five. So here you can see we want to do a few things, find the PDF, calculate probability, x is less than two here in part b, the probability x between one and three in part c. And for both of these, we're 
interested in creating a graph uh, that would illustrate the probability. And then finally, we'll find the mean and the variance of x. OK, so starting off, we want to find the PDF. So we can substitute alpha and beta into the formula that we just talked about. I'll backtrack a little bit. So we're using this formula over here. We're substituting for alpha and beta and then simplifying. And you can see something a little bit surprising, but I did give you a heads up here that um, when we do this, we get one fifth. Okay, so that's your one over beta. Gamma of one. Okay, what's gamma of one? Zero factorial, which is one. So that sort of disappears. Here we have x to the zero power. That disappears. And what's this distribution? Well, this is an exponential distribution. So here you could see here's almost the argument for why we get um, the exponential is a special case of the gamma distribution. So if we wanted to find the probability x is less than 2, right, we can set this up. A couple of ways we can do it here, but using the PDF, we get the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 fifth e to the minus x over 5. So we find this integral, and you may remember that sort of the 5 sort of cancels out when we make a u substitution. So we get minus e to the minus x over 5, evaluated from 0 to 2. And we could work this out, and you see we get 0.3297. So what does a graph look like? Well, you may think it's complicated, but knowing that this is an exponential distribution makes constructing this graph fairly easy. Um, I'll... We'll jump ahead and then come back. You'll see that over here, the graph that we get looks like an exponential. No surprise. We're interested here in this left side of the tail from 0 to 2. And you can see here's our probability. Okay. So this was a graph generated by Minitab. Next, we have the probability x is between 1 and 3. So now we have to find this integral from 1 to 3. I have 1 fifth e to the minus x over 5. So we could work this out. We end up with e to the minus 1 fifth minus e to the minus 3 fifth. Okay, so here we do sort of a typical thing and, and flip the terms because uh, the second term will have a, a double negative. Right, you see this first term becomes over here, second one, and then when I substitute in one, there'll be a double negative, making it a positive. So we put that here. We could work these out with a calculator, and we get 0.2699. The graph illustrating the probability looks like this. Here we get this strip. X is between 1 and 3. We know the curve looks like an exponential. And Minitab gives us the probability right here, 0.2699. Come back here. You can see it matches up. So everything is good and consistent. Now, we know that the, the mean of X or the expectation of X for a gamma is alpha times beta. And we're given alpha is 1, beta is 5, so we get 5. And the variance for x is alpha times beta squared, which gives us 5 squared, or 25. OK, so there are the graphs one more time. So at this point, I'm going to suggest that you stop the video and try to work out answers to this. Now, this 
is similar to the last example, but a little different here. Uh, the, the new wrinkle, just, we just changed one number, but we get alpha is equal to 2 here, and beta is equal to 5. Okay, So I would ask that you find the probability, x is less than 3, and try to create the graph any way that you can. Um, if you could figure it out fine, you want to plot points, use technology any way that you can. The important thing is that you find this probability. And then finding the mean and the variance is just using the, the formulas correctly. So, so give this a stop, and let's see how you do. Okay, did you get a probability? 0 0.01219. That would be the answer. Here you could see we get a graph. And notice how different this is from the case where alpha was 1, right? Previous problem had alpha 1, beta 5. This is just alpha 2, beta 5. And you could see instead of that exponential shape, we get this sort of skewed shape over here and so here's our probability and finding the mean just alpha times beta so we get 10 the variance alpha beta squared and we get 50. okay let's take a look at some beta distributions so Similar to the gamma distribution, the beta is also a family of, we could say, skewed distributions, and based on two parameters, alpha and beta. But the big difference here is that the distribution is used to determine probabilities for proportions. Okay, so things like defect rates or the probability, let's say, a baseball player has a certain batting average. Um, so, so we're interested in probabilities for proportions. So that um, distinguishes the beta distribution. You can see here that it relies heavily on the gamma function. F of x is gamma of alpha plus beta in the denominator. Gamma of alpha times gamma of beta, x to the alpha minus 1 times 1 minus x to the beta minus 1. Okay, so now these four small variables, small values of alpha and beta, these are fairly easy to figure out. Remember, gamma generalizes the factorial function. So if I have gamma of n, it's n minus 1 factorial. Again, we get fairly simple formulas for e of x out alpha over alpha plus beta, and the variance of x, you can see here, alpha over beta over alpha plus beta squared times alpha plus beta plus 1. And in our we could find probabilities. Um, if I wanted the probability x less than or equal to c, we use p, right? So this is right our, our standard letter for r when you're looking at the cumulative um, CDF. So p, beta, c, c coming from over here, alpha and beta. All right, let's take a look at an example. So here we have example three, working with the beta distribution. In a certain New York county, suppose the proportion of highway sections requiring repairs in any given year is a random variable with a beta distribution where alpha is three and beta is two. <clears throat> so a very important word that should strike you in the beginning here is that we're studying proportions the proportions of highway sections. So maybe it's 30%, 40%, 50%. Okay, 
we want to find out probabilities concerning proportions. All right, so after some data analysis, people find out that the proportions sort of vary and follow a beta distribution where alpha is three and beta is equal to two. You can see here's a plot of the PDF. Um, so let's say we ask, you know, on average, what percentage <clears throat> of the highways or the highway sections require repairs in any given year? Part B, find the probability that at most half of the highway sections will require repairs in any given year. And let's try to provide a graph. <clears throat> All right, so part A is asking us for um, an average, which would be of X or mu. We have this formula, alpha over alpha plus beta. We know alpha is three, beta is two. So substituting in, you can see we get three fifths or 0 0.60. In words, we could say that um, on average, 60% of the highway sections require repairs in any given year. Now, in order to find the probability in part B, let's just backtrack a second over here. We want to find the probability at most half of the highway sections require repairs. So really, we're trying to find the probability that X is less than one half. All right, so in order to do that, we must find the PDF. Okay, but it's not too bad because these numbers are manageable. Um, if I think in terms of this numerator, I'm going to have gamma of three plus two, which is gamma of five. Gamma of five would be four factorial, which is 24. Down here, I need to find gamma of alpha, so that's gamma of three. Well, gamma of three would be two factorial, that's two. And then gamma of beta is equivalent to gamma of two, one factorial, which is one. So if we substitute everything in here, right? So remember, this was 24. And then here we had down here, three times two. So <clears throat> we would get things to work out. Actually, what do we get here? We get gamma of three is two. I have 24 in the numerator. This is two times one, two in the denominator. And so we would get 24 over two. That's how we get to 12. Alpha of three minus one. Um, <clears throat> let's say that again. This is X to the alpha minus one. So X to the three minus one is X squared. And this will be one minus X to the power beta minus one, beta is two. So this power just becomes one. And you could see this will be our PDF. If you wanted to, you could check, but this should sort of integrate out to one. If you make the limit zero to one. So in our next step, we work out the integral. We get the integral from zero to a half, 12x squared times one minus x dx. Now what I would do here is bring the 12 outside of the integral, then use a distributive law. We get x squared minus x cubed dx. All right, integrating x squared is easy. We get x cubed over three. Integrating x cubed is easy. We get x to the fourth over four. We have to evaluate this from zero to a half. We'll get 12 times five over 192. You work all of this out. And that does simplify to the fraction five over 16. 
We could try to confirm that, maybe using R. So we would use P beta, one half, three, two, and R would return 0.3125. So that's our answer in, in decimal form. So that solves the problem. I do have one more thing to show you. We need to look at the graph. Uh, just mention this note here. This comes from Miller and Freund's Probability and Statistics for Engineers book. So here's what our graph looks like. You can see we're finding sort of a left tail probability. We want the area under the curve from 0 to 0.5, where x represents a proportion. could be anything from 0 to 1. So 0 to 0.5, and then this is the probability that x is less than 0.5. We get 0.3125, which matches up with the other two ways that we did this. OK, so that's example 3. For example 4, once again, I'm going to give you um, well, this isn't a variation. This is a, a different problem. Uh, this comes out of um, Hanshik An's book, Probability and Statistics for, for Engineering and Science Using R. So here's a problem involving proportions of defects, right? And the, the question goes like this. Suppose that the proportion of defects shipped by a vendor varies from shipment to shipment but we could think of it as a random variable with a beta distribution where alpha is one and beta is four so we're saying this proportion of defects so again this is a proportion maybe it's 10 percent 25 percent 75 percent the proportion of defects varies and we're saying it follows a beta distribution with alpha is one and beta is four. So I will ask you to find the mean of the distribution, find the probability that a shipment from this vendor will contain more than 25% defectives, and then try to sketch a graph, use technology, um, <clears throat> All right, so let's stop the video and see how you can do. Okay, let's see how you did here. Did you get the mean is 0.2? Let me go back to the formulas that I gave for the mean. That should be pretty easy to work out. Now I'm giving you an answer here calculated using R. Okay, you have to be careful because using R, remember R uses the CDF, so this would give you the probability X is less than 0.25, but we want the probability X is greater than 0.25. All right, so you have to look at the complement and so our answer works out to be 0.3164, at least the four decimal places. And we could confirm that also using Minitab, something called a distribution plot. So here's what we're looking at, um, this distribution plot. And you can see this almost reduces down to an exponential. Uh, we want the probability x is greater than 0.25. So this becomes a right tail, and the probability works out to 0.3164. Okay, that concludes the video. I, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. And that's it.